Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. I am so glad you're here. If you're new here, I'm Christina, and in today's video, I am going to be attempting to touch on a few different things. Last week, I shared my homeschool planning video with you guys, how, how I plan, that I don't have a perfect system, that I don't have a formula, just walked you through kind of my rudimentary planning and my thoughts behind planning. Many of you reached out either in the comments on that video or over on Instagram and asked like, how does this all come together? I want more information. And then I've had a lot of conversations over on Instagram with moms who are trying to figure out how these different units come together that we're doing, but then also how I tie in things for all of my different age kids. Like what does that actually look like? And lastly, I mentioned in that video, if you guys would be interested in a follow-up at the end of the month to say what exactly we got to and how it worked out. And many of you said in the comments and over on Instagram that you would be interested in that. So what I decided to do is that I will do that, but I also wanted to follow up from last week's video and share with you a little bit more detailed planning about what September will look like. So this video is going to sort of be September homeschool plans and goals, and then also some specific examples of how I plan to tie together some of these units that we are doing in September. So I'll show you my planner, I'll show you what I've planned out for each week, and some of the activities that I plan to use for all of my different age kids to bring these things together for such a wide range of children. And really just ways to infuse some fun into your homeschool. So I'm gonna start with giving you some overviews in my planner that I did not have last week. Um, if you are watching this video on the day that it goes up, which is Tuesday, September 6th, today is officially our first day of school for the 2022-2023 school year, and I am so excited. So as of today, if you're watching this video when it comes out, I have a second grader, a sixth grader, a 10th grader, like I can't even, I can't even get over that saying it is crazy to me because I taught 10th grade for four years. So it just seems wild to me that I have my own 10th grader now. And then I have a three going on four year old. So I guess he's preschool. He's preschool. I, I will just accept he's preschool. And then I have my two and a half year old who will just be tagging along, but I'm also going to share like how I include her. So showing you the rhythms of our day and how I make that work for everyone, and then some of the units will actually be doing, and then some resources that I pull in to make it fun and engaging for everyone. So if you saw last week's video, you saw that I did not have a ton written down for this week or for this month. I did show you this notes page that came before the month where I listed any tree related units that I wanted to get in for September or October, noting like that October is, um, tree week in nature study club and that there is tree and leaves week in exploring nature with children also in october so i was just trying to map out some things for the upcoming months and then other units that i knew i wanted to get to um, but not necessarily september or october something that i've done since then which is pretty sloppy is that i did go through my two books that are like this, I have Indescribable and How Great Is Our God, which is out of my reach right now. And I just took notes on pages that had devotions that were insect related because September is all about insects in Nature Study Club. So I'll share about that in just a minute. And I'll share those with you if you're interested to make it easy to not have to sift through the book. So I did do that ahead of time. So then I have my September wish list. These are all the things that I would love to do and get to for September. So start our natural medicine unit. This is from Campfire Curriculums. I did share a whole video and flip through about this. So I will try to remember to link it down below. And I actually did not bind this and print this myself this time. I used pure and simple printing. So I will link her down below as well, as well as a discount code if you want somebody else to print and bind from you. Um, so natural medicine is on my wish list for starting. The it will be okay unit is a unit that I created that I'll show you in just a minute. It was for like a spring mega bundle. So if you bought that mega bundle, you probably have that unit, but if you didn't, and you're interested in it, when I share it with you, it'll be linked down below. The Apple unit study that I got from the Back to School Mega Bundle. Um, going apple picking is on my list. Going to the beach one last time. Don't know if that's gonna happen, but I'd love to see that happen. 
starting the autumn guide from the Peaceful Press. And I'm gonna be sharing specifically like how I've planned that out and what that looks like. Finishing our Adirondack unit. I'm thinking about doing, I just wrote this down so I didn't forget, the community and connection unit study from Tori Oglesby and Misty. Morning time or lessons outside once a week is a goal that I have while it's still nice enough out and to include knowledge crates at least once a week. So that's kind of like my wish list. And then the reality is to start the pre peaceful preschool, which is the autumn unit that I'm gonna show you that I've planned out to do our knowledge crates and to get outside. That should be easy enough for us to accomplish. My main goals are really simple. Joy, peace, and connection. Like I wanna live up to this shirt. I want my kids to look at me and remember me as a happy mom. Not a stressed mom, an overwhelmed mom, an annoyed mom, a sad mom, a tired mom. Sure, I am all of those things at different times, but by and large, I want them to remember me as a happy, smiling, peaceful, fun mom. Not the fun mom that doesn't have rules or expectations because if you ask my kids, I certainly have pretty high expectations and standards for them. But I want them to see me as joyful and a joy to be around. So that's a personal goal that I have and to finish the Adirondack unit. So I'm gonna show you what this looks like planned out so far. So here is my month at a glance, you guys. So this is kind of messy because before I realized that the weeks were getting changed in Exploring Nature with Children for September, I had written them down. So it got a little bit messy. It is very rare that the order of the weeks for the topics in Exploring Nature with Children changes. However, because the harvest moon is on the 10th, which is Saturday, harvest moon week got switched to be the first week in exploring nature with children for September. And so the other weeks got shifted around too. So I made note of that in here. So what I did from there is on my calendar on Monday, because we don't school on Mondays typically, I mapped out the main things that connect with each other that I wanted to do. And even if they didn't connect with each other, I just wanted to see them mapped out on paper. I wrote down that exploring nature with children harvest moon week is this week. And then in my autumn guide, which is from the Peaceful Press. So I wanna show you things as I go because I'm a visual person and I like visuals. So exploring nature with children. I only printed out September and October. So not even all of fall, September and October, the guide I printed out right here. I don't think I'm printing out the guided journals for my kids, which I have done in the past. Um, I just printed out some of the poetry copy work that I wanted them to do. That is all I did and I printed and bound it myself. Okay, so we will do the Harvest Moon readings that week and the Autumn Guide, which is one of my goals is to start the Peaceful Press curriculums because that is new for us if you've seen those videos. We are gonna start the Autumn Guide this week as well. And I'm actually starting with week four because in week four of the Autumn Guide, Hello Harvest Moon is featured with some activities that go along with it simple activities. It's just gentle learning for preschool age kids. This one specifically says ages three through seven, which I have a three and a seven. So that's exciting. Then from book club. So if you missed it, fall book club is happening right now. It's available until the 14th. You get over 25 book guides for fall themed books for $25 and you have them for life. So I'm going to share with you a few of them that I'm using in September and possibly October, and I will link that down below for you as well. I'll also share the one that I created, which we actually already did most of it, but I'll show you it. Um, and so Exploring Nature with Children, Harvest Moon Week. I'm also going to do week four in the Autumn Guide. Now you can't do this with every unit, right? Like some units you need to do in order, but I looked through the entire Autumn Guide and there isn't really anything that builds in a way that it would mess things up to do it that way. That's why I'm doing it that way. And then in book club, there is a little sweet unit for the book, Hello Harvest Moon. So all of our Harvest Moon things will happen this week instead of having them all over the place. And so I'll show you exactly what I'm using from that. And then it's insects week one in nature study club. Those are the main things that we're doing this week. Other than math for 
my three oldest kids, so second grade, sixth grade, and 10th grade, which my boys are pretty much completely independent. And then my second grader, I sit with her while she does it. So if she has questions or she needs things read to her, I'm right there with her. So math is not something that you'll see written down. Like it's not that we don't do math. It's just that that's a given. We already do that. I don't write that down except for I write what lesson they did when I backwards plan in my day-to-day -day notes, which you saw on the last video if you saw that. So how cute is this? And I just wanna show you that it's really not overwhelming because a lot of these things are small and simple. It's not like a ton of stuff. So I didn't even print out the whole book guide from Hello Harvest Moon. All I printed was the Luna Moth portion of it because it's insect month in Nature Study Club and this connects with the book Hello Harvest Moon. So see all the connections? I just love connections. And so we're learning a little bit about the Luna Moth, very simple. And then I'll probably have my three and seven year old do this portion of it because there's really the only ages that it would apply to, except my two year old may wanna do it. I usually have to print extra stuff for her, but I was gonna just give her this coloring sheet. And I'm thinking my youngest three will want this coloring sheet. That's it from that specific book guide. So you don't have to do all of the activities in a book guide. You can just pull what suits your kids' interests, what suits what you guys are doing, what suits their age and their skill level, all of that, okay? So that's what I'm using from the book guide this week. That's it, except for finishing up what we started last week from my book guide, which is for the book Little Acorn. And oh, if you're not familiar with Hello Harvest Moon, here's the book. It's a sweet book. Okay, so I created a unit, a sweet little book guide for Little Acorn, which I love. It introduces the life cycle of an acorn and the oak tree through a simple, sweet little board book story. And then this is the guide. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but there's a couple things that I wanna point out. This unit is specifically for the younger kids, so ages three through six, seven-ish because I have a seven-year-old, right? And so I'll just show you some of the things like in the book, it shows all of the creatures that live in the oak tree once the oak tree grows. And so I did like a little cut and paste activity with them where they could create their own. I have simple tracing of letters, tracing of words from the book, acorn alphabet, so tracing the alphabet, tracing numbers, so we didn't do those yet. This little dot marker activity, different A is for acorn words, and then letter formation and tracing. Let me see if there's anything else I feel the need to show you. Oh, scavenger hunt, which we did the other day at the park. And there is scripture copy work in like three different levels. Um, and then also there's like a cute little leaf poster that you can use to decorate your homeschool space if you have one. And then this one thing I did really wanna share before we move on, something that I did for my seven-year-old, which I feel like is just a sweet little addition. Sentences, acorns only grow on oak trees, squirrels hide acorns for food. Sometimes they forget where they hide them. This helps more oak trees grow. So facts about acorns, she traced each of them and then she put them together as a way for me to introduce what a paragraph is to her, that she has to indent, that there are sentences that go in a specific order that are in a related topic. So she didn't have to come up with anything for a paragraph, but it's just introducing her to the idea of a paragraph. And she wrote her first paragraph and she was really excited about it. Um, it also comes with some three-part cards if you look over on Instagram, you'll see these things in action in a reel. Some like um, little trees that have numbers and they put that amount of acorns. So really cute little stuff for the little guys. But there's an overview of week one and this is all that I have written out for week one in September. I just have my to-do list for the week because again, we don't typically school on Mondays because my husband is off. So I use this column as my weekly like to-do list things that I wanna get to. So you'll see that I have some of the same things written down, like Exploring Nature with Children Harvest Moon Readings, Harvest Guide Week 4. Um, it should say Autumn Guide. I don't know why I wrote Harvest Guide. Um, Book Club, Hello Harvest Moon Guide, 
Nature Study Club Insects Week 1, Adirondack Unit Notebooking. I don't have the Adirondack Unit in front of me, but if you've seen it in a previous video on Instagram, I created it for um, another bundle. And it's a simple like five minute thing we do each day as part of our morning time and not even every day, like three-ish times a week. So it's not a big deal like it's not like I have 10 different serious units going on at the same time. Some of them we just touch on, not every day. They take five to 10 minutes in like our morning basket or morning time. So I wanna finish that up. Our Savannah, this is another thing that is part of our morning time that I've shared quite a few times, which is just book four in the ready to read unit. So technically this is for my seven year old, but these one page lessons um, that also have a Bible connection serve as a fun, morning basket thing that actually gives us a devotion and the way that i've connected that for my older kids because i told you that i would share that in this video is and i've shared this before too um to every nation a study of 12 missionaries and their great god instead of going in order in this because this is another one that you didn't have to go in order in i decided to start with the missionary david livingstone which was a missionary to africa and it's about halfway through again certain units you can do this certain ones you can't and that's a way to tie in Africa and the study of Africa with the Savannah unit. And then two more books that I've pulled that I did not share yet that I'll either let one of my boys choose this as an independent read or if we want to read it as a read aloud, I'm going to let them decide, is The Elephant Whisperer. And this is nonfiction, My Life with the Herd in the African Wild. And then also books and bricks this will be a read aloud for everyone how a school rebuilt the community and this is based on a real event at Zerilda Park Primary School in Cape Town South Africa shortly after the historic democratic election in 1994 that ended apartheid so those are some connections to show you how with something like this that's technically for my seven-year-old I am tying it in all the way up through 10th grade with all of my kids and then the way that I tie it in with my younger ones is I have like board books about Africa or safari animals, things like that. I don't have them in front of me to show you, sorry. That gets us through almost everything that we're gonna do this week. Some of these are just books like read alouds that are in our morning time, um, Tuttle Twins money activity, Tuttle Twins pencil activity. Um, if you're not familiar with Tuttle Twins, I will link them down below. But when you get the 12 book pack, you also get all of the PDF versions of the activity guides, workbooks that go along with them. And so we're not reading any new Tuttle Twin books this week, but we will do some of the activities as a way to review what we've learned from the books. So I'll link those down below. And then touching on some U.S. Constitution and U.S. government lessons that we're still finishing up that have taken us forever, but that's okay. Um, okay, so that is this week. Also their math, and that's pretty much it, you guys. We have a wild and free meetup with our wild and free group that I'm so excited about, so that'll be this week as well. And that's one of our goals too, is just to continue to go on our wild and free meetups. That's a new thing for us in the last couple of months that we're really excited about. It's our first homeschooling group ever, so super pumped about that. All right, so let's take a look at week two, because there's some more things that I wanna share with you. These weeks should go by fairly quicker. My boys are outside playing and they're like driving me crazy. Like, what are they doing? What is that noise? 11 and 14 year old boys. Let me know down below if you have those. They're fun, but they're a little crazy. Okay, second week is Autumn Guide Week 1. So I started out, remember, with Autumn Guide Week 4, and then I'm going to circle back around and go in order at that point. So Autumn Guide Week 1 includes the book Goodbye Summer, Hello Fall, which Oh, I do have it in front of me. This one, they have one for every season. We love these. Lots of like imagery and literary techniques and things like that, that even for your older kids are a great way to teach literary analysis. So anyways, we're gonna do this because it's in our Autumn Guide Week 1. And there's also a book guide in the Fall Book Club for that book, which I have not printed yet, but I am gonna print some activities from that as well. It is Exploring Nature with Children Seed Week. This is why I did not print the activities for this book yet, because I don't wanna overwhelm our week. I try to be really careful about that. Even though we're doing a lot of different things, we don't have a core curriculum for each subject for each of my children. So it's not like this is piled on top of all those other things. So 
During Exploring Nature with Children Seed Week, we are going to read the book, It Will Be Okay. We've read this before. We absolutely love it. Trusting God Through Fear and Change. It is about a little seed. I've talked about it before, and I shared the unit that I created to go along with it, like in the spring, because it was in a spring mega bundle. It's now available on Etsy if you didn't get it, so I'll link it down below. But I want to share with you how I've planned out how to do it with my kids, because in that old video, I just shared with you everything that was in the unit, and I didn't even really have a specific plan for it. So we will read this book at the beginning of the second week, so next week, during Seed Week and Exploring Nature with Children, because it's about a little seed. And let me show you what I did, is I created three different little workbooks for my two three and seven year olds. My two year old does not need any workbooks, okay? I don't even think early education is necessary. Don't get upset with me about that, but I really don't. However, she gets really upset more and more by the day. She gets really upset if she doesn't have something like the older kids have. So I made her one, okay? And so let me show you what I did. I have coloring pages in this unit. And so instead of making covers for each of them because I didn't want to give myself another job to do, I just chose a different coloring page and they'll kind of like color their own cover. I thought that was kind of cute. All right, so for my littlest, my two-year-old, she's not quite ready for this, okay? But I also realized that my three-year-old that I'd planned this for way back in the spring is kind of past this. And you'll see what I mean. So I gave her two coloring pages and then I gave her all of these pages. I love these pages, but my three-year-old, it's kind of easy for him now. So this is just a bunch of tracing large versions of uppercase and lowercase letters of words that are in the story. So there's a bunch of them so that she feels like she has something to do with everybody else. That's all it is. She's got all of these, okay? Then for my three-year-old, I gave him these coloring pages for the purpose of showing him the difference of between the words farm and farmer. And then I gave him one more fox because I know he's gonna want the fox. And then I gave him this farm color by number because I feel like he can do this now. And then I gave him the next level up of tracing. So he still has uppercase and lowercase, but he has short words and they're much smaller. So he goes through all the, this is not the whole alphabet. It's just like, you know, a handful of letters. And then also some scripture copy work. So he just has a shortened version. Like the older kids do the whole verse. He has a shortened version. And that's it for his little book. And then for my seven-year-old, I gave her this cover. I think she's really going to like that. And I'm going to want them to memorize this verse as part of this little unit. Okay, so this is following directions. She has some sight word sentences that she will tra read and trace and write. She has some grammar, like fix it sentences. She has the longer versions of the scripture copy work. I actually gave her two levels of it so she can kind of build on working on the scripture and then even writing it herself. And that is it for her. This, this isn't like a long unit. This will take us like a week. Okay, for my older boys, I did not make them a book because they are going, and this is a great example, again, of how I'm tying in something like this picture book with my older boys, 11 and 14, almost 15, at their level that's actually teaching them skills they need to know, okay? So they are gonna be looking at allegory in the story. They are going to be doing summary of the story. They are going to be analyzing the story they are going to be making text to self and text to text connections to the story. And then they are going to put it all together into a three paragraph essay. For my fifth, almost 15 year old, I'm gonna have him do a five paragraph essay. He's just gonna add an intro and a conclusion to that. And then they also will do a scripture copy work that has a little bit more work to do with it, like going into their Bible and finding it and finding the context for it. So. That is what they will do for Seed Week and Exploring Nature with Children. And then there are a ton, I'm not gonna go through them all guys, there are a ton of flashcards, putting together sight word sentences, matching up numbers, putting together the script, the verse, all together. So there's a bunch of those kinds of things. Oh my gosh, you guys still have so much to share with you. I'm gonna try to make it quick. The insects unit for Nature Study Club. Okay, so I wanna show you what I did with those scriptures. I'll show you this really quick. 
or not the scriptures, the devotions from How Great Is Our God and Indescribable, I kind of wrote them into the month at a glance where I think they would best fit. Like if they were that specific insect, I put them with that specific insect. If they were a general one, I found a place that made the most sense. So I just wanted to show you that really quick. I'm not gonna do a full flip through of this guys, but I just love Nature Study Club. I will link them down below as well. Okay, so week three. Oh, actually, let me show you what week two looks like at a glance for right now. So I showed you on my calendar. There's week two. This is all I have written down on my weekly plan. Autumn Guide Week 1, Insects Week 2, Exploring Nature with Children Seed Week, and it will be okay. There will be more things added as we near the end of this week, but nothing yet, okay? Week 3, we have Autumn Guide Week 2, which in the Autumn Guide Week 2 is the book Ox Cart Man, with some simple related activities. And in the Fall Book Club, there is a little book guide for Ox Cart Man. Now, there is more in this one that I'm gonna use than in Hello Harvest Moon. Okay, there's a lot of fun stuff in this one. Who, what, where, when, and why, which I'm gonna do as a group with my kids. Seasonal cycle of goods, so they will write down the different things that they, that they sell, that ox cart man sells each season. Then there is a bar graph activity that my seven-year-old will do, graphing food goods and handmade goods. Then ox cart man problem solving. We will do this first one together. And then I will give each of my boys, I'm gonna give each of my boys two of their own problems to solve. And then they'll have to share out how they came up with solving those and coming up with their own sort of bartering system. My seven year old will do this tracing and writing. And then this is really cool. So the last Tuttle Twins book that we read was all about economics and inflation and bartering versus currency and all of those things. And Ox Cart Man touches on economics. I just love the natural connections that like sometimes I can't even plan it as good as it happens. So we will review economics, producers and consumers, wants versus needs, which we could always, all of us use a refresher on that. And then there are some sweet coloring pages for my younger kids. So super excited because again, Ox Cart Man is in both our autumn guide from the Peaceful Preschool and there is a fall book club guide for it. So I love that. Okay, so that is for week three. I do not have anything planned that connects to autumnal equinox, okay? So there's an example of like, not everything's planned out, still not everything's planned out. If there is room this week, that is when I will start the natural medicine unit. So if you notice, I didn't write down which week I was gonna start that. I don't plan everything because I like to see how things are going, keeping in mind, I wanna start it sometime this week or sometime this month, and I know it'll be the second half. So it'll either come in the third or fourth week and I'll figure it out as we go. And then the fourth week is Autumn Guide week three exploring nature with children mini beast hunt which connects perfectly with the last week of nature study club that's all about insects so that's a natural connection point there it's insects week four in nature study club and so those things naturally connect and we have a field trip that day and then i will revisit autumn guide week four in the first week of october because this week, we're not doing everything from week four. We're doing the Hello Harvest Moon stuff, but we're not doing the stuff that goes along with the book, Bring Me Some Apples and I'll Make You Apple Pie, because I wanted to wait in order for that to lead into the apple study that we're going to be doing from Books and Willows, which was in the back to school bundle that was a little while ago, a few weeks ago. So if you have that bundle, if you got that bundle, you have that unit, it's beautiful. And there's another bundle coming up, you guys, on the 14th. So this fall book bundle ends on the 14th, and then there is a back to school bundle, which I created a brand new unit for that I'm so excited about. So be on the lookout for that. But, so we will revisit that in October. So that is it for books and curriculums that I have planned out. But I told you that one of my goals was including our knowledge crates at least once a week. And I just got yesterday, my fall boxes from Knowledge Crate. And I get the preschool box and I get the school age box. 
And I'm not going to do a full unboxing for you guys because I feel like those videos actually don't do really well. So it's kind of a waste of my time. I'm just going to show you a couple things in each box that I'm super excited about. And I'm going to link them down below. And if you did not see this yet on Instagram, you can now use my code rooted15 for 15% 15 off any box. Before they didn't work for the mini crates and you could only use them on an annual subscription. Now, if you just wanna try out a box, if you wanna try them out for fall, you can still get 15% off. So I'm super excited about that. So this is, actually I wanna start with the preschool crate. So the reason I wanna share this is because this is another way that I infuse fun and hands-on activities into our homeschool because it's zero work for me. It's already done. Everything is purchased. If you need glue, it's in the box. If you need a paintbrush, it's in the box. If you need whatever you need, it's in the box, okay? Other than like water, because they're not gonna send you water in the box, okay? So I'm so excited. It comes with always an activity guide, which lays out all of the activities. It tells you the instructions. It tells you everything you need for the activity. But before I show you some of the things that I'm most excited about, there are five books in each crate. So, One Windy Day is in the preschool box, The 12 Days of Preschool, Froggy Goes to School, When the Leaf Blew In, which I'm super excited about, and The Kissing Hand, which is one of our favorites. So, those are the five books that came in my preschool box. And again, I just wanna show you a couple of things. I'm not gonna do a full unboxing, but I'm, I'm so excited about, like, I'm so excited about this box. Okay, so something that has become a favorite that they recently started doing were the little animals and the fact cards. And this is Woodland Animals this time. And look, at, oh my gosh, you guys, these are so precious. We had like the sharks and whales in the summer and my kids love them. And they have these little fact cards that go along with these. And these are so perfect to do with the Play-Doh. So three different colors of Play-Doh. Then there, I noticed in the guide, there's an animal tracks activity. So you take them and you have them do their little animal tracks in the Play-Doh. It's so cute, I can't even take it. So there's always Play-Doh, there's always paint, there's always art activities. Some things that I'm super excited about, this wreck and wreck, you guys, we don't have one of these and I'm so excited and it's wooden. Look at this sweet little thing for early math skills. I could, this is like probably the thing I'm most excited about, this and this, things I'm most excited about. There are so many activities in here to keep us doing hands-on stuff all fall long. It's so hard for me to not show you everything because it's just so good. There's always a scavenger hunt. There are always dry erase sheets with different skills for them to work on to trace and little games and crafts and experiments. And it's just so good, you guys. I wish I had time to show you all of it, but who wants to watch an hour long YouTube video, am I right? Okay. So I'm just gonna show you a few things from the school age crate. Also comes with its own activity guide, set up the same way with the activities and things that you need. Again, five books, you guys. I'm so excited about this because here's another connection with Africa that I didn't plan out, but connects so beautifully. I am Jane Goodall, so excited about this one. Pax, you guys, if you hadn't read Pax yet, read it with me, we're gonna read it. We're reading this one this fall, so excited. Charlotte's Web, I've actually been thinking about Charlotte's Web and wanting to read it because I'm reading the book, Mothering by the Book by Jennifer Pepito and she talks about Charlotte's Web in there. This one, I've not heard of, The Bad Guys. Not sure if it's gonna be my jam. I know these are like kind, the kind of books that like reluctant boy readers like, but I kind of like rage against that a little bit. So I'm gonna have to, I don't like creepy stuff either. I'm gonna have to screen this one. I'm not sure if we'll use this, but it's okay if we don't use every single thing in the box because there's so much in here. I mean, there are pastels. There are more of these woodland creatures. And look at the fact cards that come along with, in the school age crates are similar, but different. It's more reading, more information, which I love. There is sensory stuff. This is for a mosaic art project, but we're gonna use these for sensory play first because why not get multiple uses? Look at the Play-Doh accessories. There's also Play-Doh in this one. And there's not a wreck and wreck in this age group because that would be too young, but there are these fraction tiles, you guys. I'm so excited about this math inclusion because any way to make math fun when I am not like a math person, 
this one unplugged this looks interesting actually this is um as the son of the world's most famous tech billionaire spoiled jet baronov has always gotten what he wanted so when his father's private jet drops him in the middle of the arkansas wilderness at a place called the oasis jet can't believe it he's forced to hand over his cell phone eat grainy veggie patties and participate in wholesome activities with the other kids whom he has absolutely no interest in hanging out with it's all about how the week goes on the weeks go on and how he starts to enjoy himself super excited for this one and that is all of the books in the school age crate but guys again there's play-doh in here and paint and countless activities colored pencils like if they need colored pencils for an activity they're in here so i mean glue washi tape there is always sensory play so there are water beads in both of the boxes i could be here all day talking about knowledge crates you guys i absolutely love them let me know down below is any of this helpful what questions do you have what do you want to know more about? Do you want to hear more about like our daily rhythm, what it looks like? Let me know all the things down below. If you're new here, please introduce yourself. I love to get to know you guys and connect with you. If you are not already following me over on Instagram, I would love if you'd follow me over there at rooted underscore home life. If you are following me over there, can I ask you a favor? Can you please like and comment and save and share and all of the engagement because Instagram has really gotten to the point where they're like not pushing out people's content if it's not getting engagement so you like you won't even see my posts other followers won't see my posts new possible followers won't see my posts if my followers aren't engaging and i do it too like i'll just scroll and scroll and scroll interesting but if you could just even like it it makes a big difference if you can click the little save it's like looks like this if you could just click that it's a big help if you can comment it's a big help if you share it to your stories it's a big help so if you like this video, please click the like button, comment down below. If you're not already subscribed, I would love if you'd subscribe. I share all things motherhood, homeschool, big family life, all of the things. So I hope to see you soon in one of my next videos. And until next time, stay rooted.